Hello, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Wednesday. It is September 14th. The year is 2022, and we are streaming live right here on YouTube. Whether you are joining me for the live stream or the replay, I am thrilled that you are here. And it's a big night here in the studio because there's a lot going on. First and foremost, I want to talk to you about what I'm going to demonstrate this evening. I have an accordion fun fold panel card. Now, I learned this from my team member, Diane, and I'm going to demonstrate it for you. But I've got some great blending techniques for you, as well as some card making tips that I don't know if you know or not. So we're going to pack that all in tonight. In addition to the card I'm demonstrating, I have an alternative one for birthday. I'm going to show you Diane's card as well. And I have six other cards to share. They're all part of this month's online card class. Now, the big excitement for tonight is we are celebrating my 24th year as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And in order to do that tonight, we are going to do a big giveaway. So let me tell you a little bit about that as we get started. Now, I'm going to be glancing over at my notes from time to time because there's a lot to cover tonight. And it's a lot of fun and I don't want you to miss out. So to celebrate my 24th anniversary, I'm going to be giving away not one, but two mini stamp and cut and emboss machines. They are brand new. They will come straight to your house. Now, this is for U.S. residents only. For all my friends overseas, I love you and I thank you so much for watching. But there's no way we can afford to send the product to you, so I apologize for that. You're going to want to stick with me to the end of the live stream where I'm going to provide you with the details on how to enter it's free and it's easy, so make sure you stick with me. Now, one of the other things I want to talk to you about tonight is this. If you have not registered for the Fall Online Stamping Retreat, I am worried you're going to miss out. This online virtual event is a full day where I have partnered with Kylie Bertucci, who is the Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Australia, number one, by the way. If you haven't checked out her YouTube channel, check out Kylie's channel. Her husband, Bruno, and her are immensely creative and lots of fun. They're joining Gina Curcio Holly, and myself for a virtual event that's going to be streamed live. Now, if you can't join us on September 24th, which is the date it is here in the U.S., the 25th if you're overseas, still register because we're recording all the live content and you will have lifetime access to those video replays as well as the very vast PDF tutorial. And I don't know about you, but I love Prize Patrol and it doesn't matter where you live, we have Prize Patrol for everyone. We would love to have you join us. All the details can be found over on our website called Online Stamping retreat.com. Okay, the last big news before I start stamping is this. Tomorrow is September 15th, and for that one day only, Stampin' Up! is taking 15% off all stamp sets in the annual catalog. So I want to emphasize it's stamp sets only in the annual catalog. So this would not include bundles that come with punches or dies, but I want to give you a little tip. If you do the math, Bundles are a 10% savings, and this is a 15% discount. So buy your stamp sets at a 15% discount, and then buy your dies separately, and you're still going to save 5%. Keep in mind that host-exclusive products are not included in this special because those are naturally redeemed with Stampin' Rewards for a large order. Oh, it's going to be a big week here. All right, let's get started. All right, let me just move those buttons out of the way. I am going to tell you that I am still recovering from covid uh, this is day 17, so if I sound a little raspy, uh, please forgive me. I have my water bottle and cough drops off to the camera side here, just in case I go into a coughing fit, so just bear with me. The scoring dimensions for this screen divider card is very, very simple, and I've got some great tips for you on making this. So I am using Rich Razzleberry cardstock, and this measures 5.5 by 11. Now, a couple things I want to make sure you know about. Don't miss the project sheet. I'm going to have a link down in the video description below with a free project sheet for you that's going to include pictures, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies for this card. In addition to that, we'd love to have you chat with us tonight, so make sure you log into your YouTube channel. All right, ready? The first score line is going to be at two and three quarters of an inch, and I don't do anything straight, so I need that little ledge here at the top. There's also one here at the bottom. That light blade comes with your trimmer as well as the dark blade. This is for scoring, this is for cutting. So I'm moving the cutting blade out of the way. So two and three quarters of an inch and I am going to score. 
The next one is at five and one half inch. So I'm looking to line that up here and we're going to score. Now the next one is at eight and a quarter. And this is one of the things I love about this trimmer because we have an extendable ard. You can't see it, but it goes all the way just to past 17 inches. And this score line is gonna be at eight and one quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that up, making sure it's straight, and then we're going to score. That is it. So let me just move this out of the way. And I am gonna reach for my grid sheet. So now we're gonna need this tonight because we're gonna do some blending techniques. I can't wait to teach you those. Now, the great thing about this project is we've got four equal quadrants here. And we are going to need to create a stand for this screen card. Now, I have played with this a gazillion ways to try to find the easiest way for you. And I've decided that this is it. Now, I know it's gonna be very difficult for you to see those score lines because the cardstock's kind of dark. You are going to need a mark on the very first panel. It doesn't matter if it's here, 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 or here, because it's symmetrical. At one and three eighths, which exactly is the half of this perimeter between here. Now, I love to use my trimmer for just about everything, and that's going to include um, measuring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of cardstock, these are my vertical score lines, and I'm gonna move this over to one and three eighths of an inch, okay? I am not gonna cut or score, I'm just using that as a measurement, and I'm using my favorite mechanical pencil. This is the Bic pencil number two. It's the softest lead you'll ever find. The eraser is a champ. I have it linked for you in my craft room favorites. Head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com, click on shop and craft room favorites. So one and three eighths, I'm coming in there, and I'm making a pencil mark. Now I made it longer and a little darker, hoping that you can see that. Oh, maybe not, hold on. If worse comes to worse, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my silver colored pencil here. Let me find that really, really quick. I should have had that out ahead of time. My apologies, here it is. This might make it a little bit easier for you. I'm gonna make a little notch right there. Okay, so now you can see it. This is going to be the mark for all of the punching that we're gonna to do to create the base of the screen card, okay? We're gonna use the Label Me Lovely Punch. Now, the one trick I wanna give you guys, and I flip this upside down, I actually labeled my punches with a Sharpie marker so that I know what they're called because I can't remember them all. Anybody else? And I know a lot of you asked me, what punch did you use? So I find by labeling it, it helps you as the viewer. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some alignment. And I'm going to give you a tip here. I'm gonna move you in a little bit closer first. All right, there's a little notch right here at the top of the punch. Do you see it right above my fingernail? We are trying to visually align that to this silver mark. It's not hard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this in. Now I'm just gonna work visually for just a moment. I wanna show you the area here and here at the bottom of the punch. That's what we're looking to align at the bottom of the paper. So I'm looking to see if this line is about center with my mark, and it looks pretty good, and my ends are here and here. I don't know if you know this or not, but if you lightly squeeze your punch, it's gonna lock your paper in place, which means it's gonna hold your positioning. Fantastic. And then all we're gonna do is we are going to punch. Now we are going to make this exact same symmetrical punch all the way over, okay? Apparently you guys are having some trouble with the streaming. Oh wow, some of you are fine though, so I'm gonna keep going. The easiest way to do this, because if you're like me and you hate keep measuring and punching, watch. We're gonna fold this panel back on top of itself. So now we have a little bit of a guide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my punch back inside of here again, and I am looking to do my very best to line up to what I already have. Now I know I can see it, you might not be able to, but there we go, and we're gonna punch. So now we have this one. I'm gonna bend this one back, so now it's in half, and we're gonna use this. I do not recommend that you punch through more than one layer of cardstock when you're using a partial punch. Remember, punches are meant for one layer of cardstock, so if you use more than one, it's gonna be really hard to punch it out, and you might not be able to, which means you're gonna have just a notch on the other one. Okay, here's our last stand right here. I'm gonna line that back up. And I'm looking to try to make it as even as possible. And I'm working it over, there we go. And I'm gonna punch. All right, so guess what? All we had to do was measure once and then just punch. And every single one of those now is symmetrical. 
super easy. All right, now let me move the punch out of the way. What I want to do next is I want to talk to you about the panels for this card and give you some fantastic blending tips. All right, I'm going to bring in four pieces of basic white cardstock. Now I'm only going to use one of these right now because this is where I'm going to teach you the blending technique. Now I've got this covered for a reason because, you know, blending means we're going to be using quite a bit of ink and it's lots of fun. And guess what? You're going to love this because it's foolproof. You cannot make a mistake. This is my favorite artboard. Whenever I'm doing stenciling or blending, I absolutely use this because you tend to use a lot of ink or even watercoloring. So that's going to keep my work surface clean. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of paper here on my grid sheets. But I also want to be able to tack my paper down so I'm not chasing it. This is the low tack frog tape. So all I did was curl up a piece and I'm going to put that right here in the middle and I'm going to put my cardstock right on top. Now let me show you the frog tape. Now don't laugh when you look at this. I saved some of the pieces I've used previously because there's no reason to waste them, right? And I just pull them off when I need more pieces for stenciling. You'll find this and this linked for you in my craft room favorites. Anything that I use with my Stampin' Up! supplies when I'm card making, I save there and a link for you to make it easy for you to shop. All right, this is anchored down. It's gonna make my life a lot easier. Now, I am gonna create a scene here for the card that I'm gonna be making tonight. I want you to keep in mind that I have an alternative that's a birthday card, and I also have Diane's card to share with you. I am gonna do some blending here at the top, but I want some uneven lines for the landscape. And this is where a half sheet of computer paper is going to come in. We are gonna start by very randomly ripping this across the top. It does not matter if it's crooked. In fact, the more crooked that it is, the better. I am gonna lay this here. You could also work this way if you want. There is no right or wrong way you're going to experiment. And when I have the other panels to share with you, I'll show you how I did them all differently and one I even slightly varied. All right, we're gonna start with a clear block and I have a brush here dedicated to black. Now I just used a silver Sharpie marker and I labeled my handle and it only goes for black. This is what I'm going to use as my palette for my black memento ink. And the reason is, is I find that I suck out way too much ink on my blending brush that gets wasted. By putting it on here, nothing gets wasted. Let me show you. So I'm gonna tap and I'm gonna add some ink here to my block. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this up because I'm working on a tight surface here. I am going to hold this by the head. I have arthritic hands and they're super sore today. So I like to hold it this way so I can control it rather than grasping. So if you struggle with arthritis, that's a great tip for you. You're looking to apply ink here in the center. So I'm gonna swirl this on here. Obviously the concentration on ink right now is very, very high. So this is where I have my scratch paper to kind of rough out that first little pigmentation. You're just gonna gauge this and you're gonna work on any angle you want. There's no right or wrong way. Your hand is gonna stay here at the bottom and you are going to blend. So I'm working half on the computer paper, which is nearest my fingers, and blending towards the top. I want you to know that blending is really not a science. It's truly an art. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but the intensity that you create is entirely up to you. So if you want it really, really dark, you're just gonna keep going over this. If you want it lighter, you're gonna use a lighter hand. And like I said, I have one that's, actually I have all four kind of finished for you because I didn't think you'd wanna watch me do it four times. But I'm gonna go ahead and just add some black here. Look it, isn't that cool? All right, well, let's keep going. I'm gonna leave this block just in case I wanna come back to it, but I am going to switch colors now. And this time with a separate block, I'm using Rich Razzleberry. Please keep in mind, if you don't have all these blocks like I do, clean them off on your scrub or your chamois, dry them, and then use them in a different color. You can absolutely do that. Rich Razzleberry, here's the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is that color coordination. The ink pad matches the cardstock that matches the accessories and the markers and so on. Gotta love that there's no guessing game. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick up some of that color here and I'm gonna create myself a palette. Now you're gonna notice I put a lot more ink there than what I need, but we're gonna do a little bit more fun. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna re-rip this. So we're just gonna go every which way. You want different angles for this type of background that we're gonna create, and we're gonna tip it again. Any angle you want, no right or wrong way. 
Remember the concentration of ink here is very strong. You don't want to put it over a previous color. Otherwise you can pick that up. So I'm going to blend a little bit off to control it and then I'm going to work here. I am not worried about going over the black. You know why? It's going to make it look even darker because the rich razzleberry is a very pigmented color and I think it's absolutely beautiful. If you have spots like I have there where it kind of lifted, brush up, which is something you can do with a blending brush that you can't necessarily do with a sponge dauber. Now, for those of you wondering, I am going to give you a quick 411 and I'm going to mess this one up on purpose so that you can see. I'm going to dab it in here, okay? I'm going to dab a little bit off. I'm going to come up here and let's just work on a different angle. What happens is, is that the density of the sponge is different from that of the blending brush. These are all little tiny fibers. What happens is if this ink isn't dry, it creates a smear line, which very much will look like when I'll show you when I'm finished. So we've got some color here. I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to add a little bit more and I'm going to come down here. And these can all be different. And don't worry about areas that you don't cover because we're going to have a little bit of fun. All right. I'm pushing this off to the side, moving my brush. We're going to rip again. Switching over to gorgeous grape. Just think of all the scenes that you can make. Just think of beach scenes and landscapes. You're going to have so much fun with all the different colors. That gorgeous grape is here. And I've got a brush dedicated to my purples. I'm going to go ahead and ink those up as well. I know you're going to ask me where I got these from. Um, I don't have them linked for you because it's an Etsy product, but you can find this at Etsy. And I believe they're called blending brush identifiers. Okay. And then I am, did I tear this? I think I did. All right. I'm going to come back over to here and I'm going to add some color. Like I said to you when we started, you cannot mess this up. Cannot, no way, shape or form. So I'm looking to add more color. If you have areas that are white and you want them darker, you can come back in there and over blend. So now I'm going to turn this way and you can see my paper's a little lifted. So I'm brushing up because I don't want to get too much underneath there. And I'm blending and blending and blending. We're almost finished because we're going to get to the finale at the bottom. And then I'm going to add a little bit more color here and then we're going to blend some more. The great thing about putting the color on the block is this. Let me show you. So I'm going to go ahead and blend that little bit in here. Let's say for whatever reason, I want a little bit more of that rich razzleberry and I want a different angle. So I'm ripping, but I'm going to say, mm, I kind of want it here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more pigmentation that's already on that block. So it's not going to get wasted. I don't have to reload it. So I'm going to work across here and I'm going to add a little bit more color. I mean, look at this. Is this not just the coolest thing? All right, let's add a little bit more and then we're going to work here at the bottom. I'm going to add a little bit more because I want to come a little bit lower for this one and then we're going to blend. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now here at the bottom where I'm going to eventually add my stamped images, I'm going to change the color concept. So I'm going to rip. I am switching over to a different block. Now keep in mind, if you're doing a beach, it's going to be browns and blues probably. If you're doing landscapes, probably browns and greens. So keep in mind that my card is going to be themed tonight. So I'm using a myriad of colors here. So this is Granny Apple Green. This is my green brush. Again, you don't want to pick up another color. So I'm going to work down here off to the side. New ripped edge. I'm going to come down here and I'm holding the paper off to the side so that my fingers are not in the way. Don't worry if you have some intensities of color on this that are higher than others. It's just going to lend credence to what we're looking for, okay? Now here at the bottom, I'm going to do this. I'm going to flip this. I don't care that this ridge pattern is going to be different. I'm just keeping my hands out of the way. Whenever you are blending with the brush, you're adding a high consistency of ink. So it's going to stay wet for a few seconds. All right, there we go. We've got an area that's missed, did it on purpose. We're going to come in with one more green and this time it's mossy meadow. So I'm going to pick that up here. Now I know one of you is already thinking, please tell me you're not using the same brush. And the answer is yes, I am. This is dedicated to my greens. So I want to give you an important tip about using blending brushes. When you go from one shade to the other, clean off the brush on your grid paper. Rub as much of that existing pigmentation off as you can. And I'm going from light to dark, so I'm not worried. But this is one reason I love using the block because you would never want to take this brush 
to the light again, right? Once it's been in the dark. This is why the black is a brilliant way to go. So I'm gonna ink that up. I'm gonna work down here and now watch what we're gonna do. One more line. And this time I'm gonna go this way and I'm gonna add pigmentation down here at the bottom. And I want this area to be a little bit darker. So now I can pull because that's kind of a shallow area, just running my head back and forth, okay? At the head of the brush. All right, there we go. We got a mist area. That's gonna make me crazy. Let's fix it. Let's come in here and I'm gonna work this way just to add a little pigmentation there so it looks normal. And we're gonna add a little bit over here as well. It'll give us a little bit of a hill, but that's totally fine. Let me talk about how to clean this. Now, obviously for demonstration purposes, I loaded this up way more than I needed because I'm gonna need a total of four of these. So I would be able to do them all. If you're at home, start with a little bit if you're only doing one section. I am taking this literally off camera to my stamp and scrub. It has a wet dry side and a dry side and I've just dried it off. You can use a rag, you can use a baby wipe if you'd like. I'm not a big fan of baby wipes for my blocks and stamps. Most often it leaves a kind of a sticky residue after time. So that's just a personal preference. So that's what you're gonna do with all of these. I'm gonna leave all the rest of those inked. I'm not gonna bother with them. But let's talk about this now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull that up very carefully. I'm gonna roll my tape off. You know I save this, right? But let's talk about how we clean this because you're probably wondering. This is where a baby wipe is gonna come into play. And I like to get the natural ones. You of course can use the generic brand. I just bundle it up in my hand and this is the beauty of my artboard. I swear if you love to watercolor, stencil or blend, you absolutely need one of these, you will thank me, okay? And this will just air dry and it does not ruin it. Okay, so let's put that off to the side and let's go back to here. So this is the one that I've just done. I'm concerned that it's not dry for my next step. So guess what, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna bring in the one I did just beforehand. So this is the one I did before you joined me. Do you notice here too, how this is darker here than this one? The intensity is different. I added more pigmentation. So I just went over it and over it to make it as dark as I like. So I'm gonna set this one off to the side. I can use that another time, but this one I know is dry. And this is where I'm going to do a little bit of stamping. So I'm gonna come back to my black memento ink pad. And the best thing about the stamp set that I'm going to use it's all silhouettes. You don't have to worry about what color it is. So let me show you the stamp set that I'm going to be using. It's called Scary Cute, and I wanted to make a Halloween card. I send Halloween cards to my great nephews every year. We have a family tradition in celebrating Halloween. Lots and lots of fun. And here are the coordinating dies. Now you can buy this as a bundle and save 10%, but I'm going to tell you again as a reminder, stamp sets are 15% off tomorrow then buy your dies separately and you'll still have a 5% savings. So that's just a tip for tomorrow. So we're gonna come back to this in just a minute, but let's go ahead and let's work on our images. Now, the one thing I found about the stamp set is because they're solid silhouettes and I've got those arthritic hands, I couldn't get a really clean impression. So I'm gonna show you a cheat method. This is my pierce mat and it's a piece of condensed foam. Sell it in my online store. You need it once, you're gonna love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink these up. I like to give it a little twist in my Memento Black ink pad and then follow up with a tap. If I ever get zealous and I rock this, you're gonna have black around the outside edges, which is what you don't want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna check it, make sure my stamp is clean, and my trick-or-treaters are going right down here. Lots of firm, even pressure, straight down and then straight up. Look it, is that not adorable? Okay, so I do like to stamp off my excess ink before I take it to clean it off camera. It just helps to reduce my trips to the sink to rinse that out. But let's go ahead and add a greeting to here as well. Now I wanna give you one other tip. Have you ever put the sticker on your stamp wrong and it's crooked? Does that make you crazy? Okay, so here's what I do. I pull it out and I'm looking at my grid paper for it to be straight and then I stamp. Oh, look, it's tilted to the right. That means I put the sticker on crooked. So now what I can do is I can compensate slightly by tipping it so that it appears to be more straight. All right, let's see if I can do this without messing it up now that you're all watching me. All right, so I'm looking over here. I always say, if it doesn't come out right, I'm sending it to my mom. She likes everything. There we go, that's pretty good. All right, I've got more fun for you because I have some more things that I'm going to teach you. So let me put this off camera for just a second and let's work over on some pieces. Now, before you join me, 
I took the privilege of taking these adorable dies. You'll see that there's some bats in here. And I have three of the small bats here. I die cut them. One, two, and three. And you've got to love, you can just lay them all out at once and you've got them. I also have a moon, but I want to talk to you about the moon because I know one of you is going to ask me. I took a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock and before I die cut that little moon, isn't that cute? I took what was left over on my brush and I added some haziness to this cardstock just to try to break down some of the brightness so that it would blend in nicely with my card. A great tip for you. Don't think you have to reload these every single time. Now, don't forget, I've got other cards to share with you, birthday themes and six other cards as well. So make sure you stick with me and we've got that giveaway tonight. So what I'd like to do first before I get this panel all ready is I'm going to go ahead and take these pieces and I'm going to kind of lay them out here on my card where I want them to go. The biggest mistake that I make is I get so excited about putting my card together and then I end up putting them not where I want them. So I like to lay them out first. I didn't do this ahead of time because I got to tell you about something and that's my liquid glue. I love the multi-purpose liquid glue sold in my online store, but the problem is that the tip is not small enough for these little things. So what I did is I purchased these. These are the Precision Glue Tip Applicators. Again, these are in my craft room favorites. They're linked there for you. You're going to squeeze this down inside. The glue is kind of thick. You're going to tap it. You're going to fill it once. This is the same bottle I have had for two years. You will thank me. A YouTube viewer shared this tip with me. She said, Lisa, put a rubber band around that bottle to hold that little cap in place so it's not flopping around. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now that precision tip is gonna be your best friend. So let me bring in that silicone craft sheet here. I am going to get it started and you can see how tiny I can get these. You cannot do this with any other glue, love this. So I'm gonna start by adhering these. Now the one in your project sheet actually has this up on a mini dimensional. And you can use that if you'd like, just for a little added emphasis. The glue is very strong. So you don't have to go crazy by putting a whole lot on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my moon here. And then I'm gonna add one of my bats. Let's just put a dot here for now. I think you guys get the idea, right? And I'm gonna add my little bat here. And I probably should put it on the back of the wings. Okay, let me show you a Gina trick. She makes a puddle. And then what she does, she takes it and she just kind of glazes through the wings. This is a Gina trick because you only need a tiny bit and then you stick it on like so. It's a great trick, isn't it? Good job, Gina. She's going to be live with me always on the last Monday of the month. So make sure you guys come back. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. Hit that bell icon and the word all so you don't miss our upcoming videos. We're going to need this again because I have another cool thing I want to teach you. Let's set this off to the side for just a moment. I've got this next panel already finished. All of the panels are different on purpose. That's intentional. Here is a piece of granny apple green cardstock. Again, remember we talked about that color coordination with the ink? You gotta love it. I did the exact same thing. I took the leftover black ink and I went over the cardstock, okay? I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I think you get the idea. Then what I did is I took this piece and I tore it towards me and I was purposed to make it jagged. That left me with two pieces. Now, when you tear it towards you, you're going to see the fibers of the paper all the way through. The reason is Stampin' Up! colors their cardstock all the way through. When you buy cheaper cardstock and you try this with their colored paper, you're going to get white. Not with Stampin' Up! products. The quality is amazing. But let me show you what I did. So I kept this piece and I kept this piece because I use them independently. Now, before you join me, obviously, I have one that's all pretty and colored with the blending tool, so you don't have to watch me do that. But we're gonna use these two together to create another scene. So I'm coming back here to my silicone craft sheet. Now, this time, I know that my larger piece can go here, and obviously adhesive on this one is going to fit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my adhesive here, and I'm going to attach that here near the very bottom of this panel. Now, I like to work on a contrasting colored background so I can see if I have it as even as possible. This now is going to be, quote unquote, my hill. So I don't want anything here at the top because I'm gonna add a little surprise here. So for this one, if you're persnickety like me and you wanna put a little adhesive at the bottom, we can do so, or you can use that fine tip applicator again and drag the tip across here. Adhesive is my best friend. I tend to be very heavy handed with glue. It's not that I don't like it. It certainly has its place. 
but this now is going to go here. Now, no two hills are ever created alike. So this one's gonna be a little bit different than the one in your project sheet. But from those dies, I want you to see this. You see that little haunted house? Okay, so I did that ahead of time. And that is here. Now, I love that die cuts beautifully. And here's my take your pick tool, that paper piercing tool attachment is gonna help me get those little pokey pieces out. All right, now we're gonna to come to the precision glue applicator. You don't need it everywhere. I don't know if you recall me saying this glue is very strong and it dries fairly quickly. So we're just gonna have a little dots here and there just to hold it in place. I don't like glue all over my fingers. So I need that take your pick tool with that putty tip and then watch what we're going to do. I am taking my fingernail here and I'm tucking my house down inside and we are going to attach it here. Now the next thing about this that I absolutely love is that the stamp set didn't overlook any of the other pieces. Now I had already used the dies of these little bats before, but this time I decided I'm gonna go ahead and stamp them to use the pieces in the stamp set. So just like we did, I'm gonna do a little twist because it's solid. I'm making sure I don't have ink around the circumference because if you're like me and you've tipped it, you will. And then I'm gonna stamp those right up here. Lots of firm, straight down pressure and lift. So now we have this next panel. Now the other panels I have all done for you because they're relatively easy with the stamps, but let's go ahead and let's add these few that we created together on some cardstock. And then I'm gonna show you this card when it's all finished and then I have several other samples to share with you. So I'm gonna flip this upside down and I'm gonna add my adhesive now to the back side. okay? My Stamp and Seal Plus is very, very strong. I don't need to go crazy with it. I don't do anything straight. Remember I mentioned that? So I'm gonna turn this sideways to try to make it as even as possible. And we are going to attach that panel here. Now I have one other, which is the one that we just did with the house. And we're gonna add our adhesive here as well. And then this one, we're gonna do the exact same thing. And I have the other two finished and I'm gonna show those to you. Again, looking for that very narrow margin all the way around. All right, and then, oh, I'm gonna let that part be a surprise. Let's bring in that card base. I decided that I wanted the crease to be what I call a valley fold, which means it goes down. These are mountain folds, they come up. Whenever you are making a fun fold, you want to go over those score lines with your bone folder because you want them to stand up very, very nicely because this card is gonna make a great display. So we're gonna start here. I'm using that silicone craft sheet once again because, oh, again, I told you it was really strong. Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to this. So that's gonna keep my work circus sticky free. I'm looking to stay within the score line and the end of the card, trying to keep an equal perimeter around it, and we're gonna attack that here. This panel is gonna be next. Wait till you see the other ones. Remember I mentioned this adhesive is strong. So whenever I'm using my cardstock, I need to remind myself to go a little slower. Because I don't know, do you like me and you get excited? Okay, I'm going sideways this time and let me tell you why. My intention is to try to keep this edge and this one as even as possible. And if I can see it horizontally, I have better luck. All right, there's this one. Okay, this one I did ahead of time. Look at how cute. This is all from the same stamp set. So the words are there. And I just mixed and matched my trick-or-treaters for here. Same exact technique on every single panel. But did you notice how they look slightly different? And the reason is, is that I just varied the way my paper was positioned. Again, we're gonna go sideways. I'm looking here to try to keep the panel across the top equal with the one next to it, working within the perimeters of that card stock. There we go. And my last panel, this one is slightly different. Do you see how I made this one lighter on purpose? Because I wanna be able to sign this when I send this to my great nephews, right? And I want to make sure that my penmanship is going to show up on here whether I'm using a ballpoint pen or I'm using a marker, doesn't matter. Now, the other great thing about this is if you decide you wanna decorate all four screen panels for this divider card, oh, there we go again, I'm pushing too hard. You can add a separate blank panel to the back side. okay? So you've got plenty of room to add more greetings. Again, I'm gonna go this way. I cannot wait to share with you these other cards. All right, so here we go. We've got this one all together. I'm gonna give it a good cursory push from the back side. This is where you could add a white panel if you want. This is how it's going to stand up when they get it. Here is your card. So it's going to fit in an A2 envelope. The height is perfectly. Obviously it's a little bit narrower, but that's okay. It's gonna do just fine. 
and then they have this whole adorable scene. And you can see the gravitation of the blending is perfect because it creates a scene, one storyboard to the other. Isn't that fantastic? All right, so now let me show you my birthday edition. So let me put that one off to the side. This one uses the stamp set called Amazing Year. Now it's quite different. Pastel is definitely more feminine, but I made this one into a birthday card. So again, the exact same thing I did before. I kept it a little bit more simple. You can add panels to the back if you'd like, but easy. Or of course, you can add all your blending and all your mixed media work to that. So we have a birthday card as well. But I want to show you Diane's card. And this is the card that she sent me for my birthday. And I loved it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to learn how to do this. And this is Diane's card to me. So this was her card to me. Look at that, isn't that pretty? This is um, that Texture Chic, um, gorgeous designer series paper, and then some dies that she added to it. So these are in your project sheet, these two. The project sheet's free. The link is gonna be down in the video description below. But are you ready? I have six more cards for you. All right, so let me share them too. Let me move this out of the way, make a little bit more room for what's coming up next. The six cards I'm going to share with you next are all part of this month's online card class, which begins today, September 14th. It's only available for a four-day period. Three are fun folds, three are card layouts. Here's the first one. Now, I did all Halloween cards for the September online card class. Now, this is the first fun fold, and you're going to notice that I used slightly a different stamp set. Isn't this fun? The reason is I wanted you to be able to use whatever you've got at home. And if you don't want to make Halloween cards, guess what? You don't have to. You're going to get a full length video to stamp right along with me at home. All right. You need to watch very closely on this card. Ready? Oh my gosh. Is that not the coolest thing or what? So this has a sliding panel to it. My video is going to allow you to stamp right along with me from home, step by step. So there's no guesswork. I'm gonna teach you coloring tips, adhering tips, die cutting tips, anything you could possibly wanna know. But if that's not enough, you're also going to get a full length PDF tutorial. Yep, that's right. So for those of you that like to read versus watching a video, I've got you covered. My PDF tutorial for this class, I'm looking, is 22 pages long. It includes templates, pictures, cutting dimensions, supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions is quite extensive. Now the class is free with a $50 product order using my card class host code. Now I'll show that to you in just a second. This is card number four. These are the three fun folds and I've got three layouts. Again, the great thing about this class is you can use these card ideas for any theme whatsoever. So here is card number five. Oh, I got so many fun things to teach you in this video. And then card number six. So I do want to point out to you, in addition to the Scary Cute Bundle, which I fell in love with, I also used two others. Now, again, you can use whatever you want. I used the Bewitching Bundle. This punch is on low inventory. So if you are falling in love with this like I am, you need to order it immediately, okay? The reason is, is once it's on low inventory, it's off the shelves until new inventory comes, and it could be several weeks. Please remember about the stamp set sale tomorrow. And then of course I used best wishes here. So I mixed and matched my favorite Halloween sets to make these cards. And of course, these are all part of the online card class. Now let me get my buttons nearby so I can talk to you about how you can get your class. You're gonna use the host code here on the screen. It's exclusive to the card class. That'll give you the video and the PDF tutorial. You need to place a $50 product order before shipping and tax using that code. It's the only way that I know that you're entitled to the class if you use the code. Now there is one exception. If your order is $150 or more, which is my typical order because I love it all, don't use the host code because Stampin' Up! is gonna give you additional rewards that you can redeem in addition to the class. But for me to know that that order was intended for class, you're gonna to need to contact me. So just go over to lisastampstudio.com, click on contact and say, hey, Lisa, the order I just placed is intended for card class. Now, for those of you that would love to get your hands on the tutorial, I do have the tutorial only available that does not include the video. So perhaps you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. That is available over on my website under shop and PDF tutorials. 
I charge $1 per page for all the pictures, cutting dimensions, templates, supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions. You're more than welcome to head over and get that. But I think you can agree with me that these layouts and fun folds can be used with any cards whatsoever, and I hope that you're going to enjoy them. Now, couple things, because we're going to do some information here about how we're going to get you the giveaway for those two mini stamp and cut emboss machines. So the first is this. Um, my daughter is just sending me a message. If these minis not a part of the sale. Um, oh, thank you, Gina, for the reminder. I'm so grateful for silent text messages. I'm sorry. The stamps I use tonight are in the mini catalog. Please remember that the 15% off stamp sale tomorrow on September 15th is annual catalog stamps only. That does not include many catalogs. So I think I misspoke when I was a little bit earlier. You know what? I just love it all. I just want it all. I don't even pay attention what catalog it comes from if you want to know the truth. So I wanted to make sure I clarify that. Thank you, Gina. All right. Do me a favor when you're over on my website at lisastampstudio.com, scroll to the bottom and you'll see the word subscribe. Click on that and I'll include you in a free PDF tutorial in my weekly e-newsletter that I don't share anywhere else. I would love to include you. It is no frills. My PDF tutorial library is very extensive there. I would love to have you check it out. Okay, deep breath. Are we ready? Okay, let's talk about the giveaway. I do want to insert right now that for those of you that would like to stay for the q and I will do a live Q&A after this announcement. All right, so here is the good news. It does not matter if you are here watching the live stream, if you are watching the replay. You have four days to enter for this giveaway, but there are several things you need to do. First, you have to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are not already subscribed. Click the subscribe button and then click the bell icon that will pop up next to it and the word all. That's very important, and I'll talk to you about that in a second. Number two, in order to qualify for the giveaway, either here in the live chat or in the comments of this video below, you need to put your first name, your last name, your city and state. And as a reminder, I can only give the mini machine away, those two machines, if you live in the USA. So thank you so much. I'm just glancing to make sure I'm not missing anything. There's a lot to remember tonight, and it's very, very exciting. So you can start by doing that now, or you can come back. You've got four days. So it's September 14th through September 17th, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And here is why you want to subscribe, because I am going to announce the two winners of the Mini Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machines live when I come back with you on Monday, which is September 19th. I've got a fantastic card for you. Actually, I've got more than one card for you. So I hope that you're going to be back here. The reason you need to hit the bell icon in the word all is because YouTube is going to send you a reminder and I would hate for you to miss the announcement if you're the winner. So I hope that you will do so. So thank you all for joining me. If you're going to stay around for the Q&A, go ahead and pop your questions right now into the comments. I'll stay and answer those for you. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing the rest of you with me on Monday when we do the giveaway announcement. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. All right, I'm going to reach over for my mouse. And my voice is getting raspy. As you type in your questions, I'm going to take a quick drink. So give me just a second. So grateful for you, Gina. Thank you for that reminder. I get so excited when I'm stamping. I don't even know what catalog it comes from. All right, so I'm checking to see if there are any questions tonight. If there aren't, then of course, then we'll just kind of cut loose. But I'll give you guys a couple seconds to put those in. There is a delay between when I speak and you hear it and when you type and I see it. That's just typical with live streaming. So I'll give you just a couple minutes. I see lots of names and I see lots of cities and states. It's so exciting to see you all enter. I am so excited to be able to give this away. Thank you for allowing me to celebrate 24 years with you. It has been an amazing ride. If it wasn't for people like yourself who love to paper craft with Stampin' Up! products as much as I do, I wouldn't be able to do what I do and be able to share it. So thank you. Um, okay, so Joan has a question. I noticed that you have a handmade stamp on the back of your card. Where did you get it from? I actually got it from vistaprint.com. There's lots of places out there, but I find Vistaprint is really reasonable as far as pricing is concerned. And I just find that that works out really well for me. I get the self-inking one because I do a lot of them. I hope that answers your question, Joan. 
Um, okay, I'm looking for a couple other questions. All right, here is Linda's question. Can the blending brushes be cleaned and washed? The, the answer is yes, Linda, they can. You're gonna use mild soap and water. I would probably recommend just like mild warm water, not hot, hot, and then rinse them really good. The issue that I have found is that some of those darker colors are really pigmented, so it requires quite a bit of cleaning. You're gonna to need to let them air dry and make sure that they're clean before you use them in another color. I'm spoiled, I do a ton of blending, so I do have one for each of the color families. The good news is when you buy them, they come in a three pack, so it's a great way to get started. So I hope that answers your question. I can do two more if we have any others. Uh, oh, I see you guys mentioning which one card you like. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you for the happy birthdays. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm so glad that I found you, Virginia. What a blessing. So glad that you are here and enjoying everything that we share. All right, if there's any other questions, let's see, just scrolling to see if there's any that I missed. Uh, I see lots of names, cities, and states to enter for the mini stamp and cut and wash machines. Um, oh, Susan's asking a question. Where do I see the Thursday one minute tips? Okay, Susan, you're referring to my YouTube shorts. So Thursday morning at 9 a.m., right here on my YouTube channel, I upload a YouTube short. There's a category for shorts. You might have to scroll when you get there to see all the shorts in one area, but would love to have you do that. Remember, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you click the bell and the word all, YouTube's gonna notify you when I share new things so that you don't miss out. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. All right, I have time for one more. Um, just seeing... Uh, okay, so here's a question from Wendy. Do the plates for the stamp and cut and emboss machine work in the big shot? Yes, they absolutely do. That's another really great question. Wendy, thank you for asking it. All right, that's the five questions for tonight. Thank you all for being here and thank you so much for your business. It's an honor to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I love inspiring you if I'm not. I hope to see you all with me live on Monday at eight o'clock. Have a blessed evening.